Here's the Defender on June 15, 2015 and uh, I'm going to talk uh, briefly about the Bilderberg Group, this uh, very typical uh, Masonic type group and uh, what happens when it is confronted with uh, certain uh, uh, certain uh, realities, certain facts, such as uh, that it uh, is of course uh, uh, a part of masonry and they have oaths, an oath that uh, declares uh, things to keep secret. And uh, it is amazing to, to know that uh, they, um, the Masons uh, have always felt that this oath is more sacred than um, any other oath. Um, hence, uh, when I take the uh, oath of the American Constitution, for instance, if they were to do that, and uh, its first article, of course, uh, speaks about uh, free speech, they consider their own personal oath which they have taken which of course is uh, contrary to free speech because uh, there is an effort to curtail uh, free speech and so uh, one wants to um, keep secret what uh, one is uh, talking on talking about. And so um, in this recent uh, gathering in Austria at this uh, hotel it was interesting uh, to see the uh, confrontation of um, the Bilderberg members. What are they going to uh, say? But even more important, what is the mannerism when they are confronted with the reality of the fact that it is a secret a group, that it is secret. And so uh, in these last uh, weeks, in these last days I should say, uh, we have, uh, I have seen some uh, movies taken on such a situation where the Bilderberg, where uh, some Bilderbergers are asked about their secrecy. And of course, friends, uh, it shows that this secrecy, this uh, Masonic type of, of uh, secrecy is no longer in, in, in effect workable. It was workable at the 16th, 17th, 18th century when uh, they could keep things quiet and secret and there were no telephones, no radio, no cameras, no uh, <laughs> smart telephones. They were just confronted with nothing but quietness all around them. So that was easy to uh, deal with it or handle it, the secrecy, it was easy to handle the secrecy because it was all around and it was nothing else uh, but secrets even in daily life. But in our days when it's such a turbulent uh, movement with everything, airplanes, trains, fast cars and all these and uh, of course television and radio and the top of it all when uh, inquisitive radios, inquisitive uh, TV people are meddling into this fact or this sort of holy ground of masonry where they could for a long time uh, keep uh, secret without a problem. And to me, the movies that I saw, and I mostly was, I think, in uh, Infowars, come, uh, where Chris 
presented it, it was interesting to see the facial expression of the people when they are being asked about their secrecy. It really is the, the faces do speak. And uh, I think uh, this is the first time in history, it's the first time in history where, in effect, uh, this can be seen, this facial expression of people who have uh, uh, taken the oath of masonry and then are confronted with the reality. And I must say here, friends, that uh, we should uh, remember here that um, the, the, uh, all the big meetings were held I, I, I should say all, almost all, in Mason, Mason buildings. So for instance, when the partition of between Sweden and Norway came into being, they had their meeting inside a Masonic lodge. So the Masons have been extremely interest, uh, important in making intrigues, uh, in warfare, and all sorts of schemes. Um, most of the times, I think, in the negative, it hasn't been very, and certainly not very sp spiritualistic, because how can you even uh, have anything like that when you are based on the, uh, imagery of, of, of fantasies of the Old Testament and its temple and all its mystical uh, things. So friends, I am signing off because I uh, felt it was very, very interesting to see these facial expression. And I repeat again, it is incredible that people, they keep this oath, but they would uh, not keep an oath about free speech, which is the uh, first article uh, in the American Constitution, I would say. It is the most important article, and they would renounce it and have never defended it, friends. There's not one case of a Bilderberger who ever defended uh, free speech. So uh, it is uh, an interesting point, an interesting situation, and uh, I like to deal and come back with it in the moment as I take some photographs of some birds here which are very very interesting. So I say goodbye.